there are many variants of PC water cooling pumps in the market, and the debate has always been which PC water cooling pump is the best for custom PC water cooling. And the two most well-known models always gets compared against each other. One is called D5 water cooling pump, and the other one is called DDC water cooling pump for PCs. But after doing a lot of research, the overall market consensus is that D5 water cooling pump have more water flow rate and less head pressure if you compare against DDC water pumps, which are rated for low water flow rate but higher head pressure. But is that true? I could not find a single comparison video or comparison test. So I decided to test both pumps and figure out the real results. So in the test, we are trying to answer the following questions. D5 versus DDC water cooling pumps flow rate is correct as advertised. D5 versus DDC pumps flow rate and head pressure difference in the custom loop. Does water flow rate really matter? And they really affect the performance of the PC water cooling? Let's find out. For this test, we're using the following PC hardware. AMD Ryzen 9 7950X CPU. ASUS X670E Prime motherboard, CPU block, 60mm radiator, and soft tubing. The reason we choose Ryzen 9 7950X is because it is one of the hardest CPU currently available in the market and extremely suitable for our testing. So please hit like and sub to the channel. It helps with YouTube algorithm. So let's first check out the specs for both pumps. First, we have Thermaltake D5 variable speed pump. It is rated for 1135 liter per hour with 300 ml reservoir and G 1x4 thread fittings. You might be able to find different D5 pumps model on the internet with different speeds all the way up to 1500 liter per hour. The second pump we are using is a freeze mod single speed DDC water pump and it is rated for 850 liter per hour with 300 ml reservoir and G 1x4 thread fitting as well. The third component we are using for this test is a water cooling digital flow meter to measure the flow rate and pressure rate of these pumps. Let's get started. In the first test, we are going to measure the flow rate of both pumps without any restriction in the loop to confirm whether the manufacturer's advertised flow rate speed are correct or not. For this test, we connected the water pump with digital flow meter and back to the reservoir. First, we tested Thermaltake D5 pump, which is rated for 1135 liter per hour. And to our surprise, we were only able to achieve 1000 plus liter flow rate, but never achieved the advertised 1135 liter flow rate. So it is kind of disappointing. And just to make sure we don't have any bad sample pump, we used multiple pumps of the same manufacturer, but the results were same. Then we tested the DDC pump, which was rated for 850 liter per hour. But again, we didn't achieve the advertised speed, but we came pretty close and we were able to achieve between 760 to 771 liter per hour max flow rate consistently. So now we know what water flow rates we are working with. Now let's go over the testing method and how we are going to assemble the loop. The water cooling flow will be connected in the following order. Water will flow from the water pump to the CPU water block. The reason we selected this loop is because we want to measure the water flow rate after it runs through CPU water block and radiator, which creates enough restriction to measure the head pressure as well. In this test, we're also going to measure the idle and max CPU temperature. For max CPU temperature, we are going to run CPU under stress test for 30 to 50 minutes max. Let's get started. First, testing the D5 pump, we can see it is able to achieve 942 liter per hour max flow rate with room temperature at 22 degrees Celsius. We were able to achieve 46 degrees Celsius CPU idle temperature as well. Under stress test, D5 pump were still able to achieve 942 liter per hour max flow rate. And CPU, we were able to achieve 80 degrees Celsius max CPU temperature while CPU running 100% for 50 minutes on the max side. Now for the DDC pump, we were able to achieve 701 liter per hour max flow rate. It fluctuated between 680 and 700 plus liter per hour max flow rate with the room temperature around 22 degrees Celsius. And we were able to achieve 47 degrees Celsius CPU idle temperature. And under stress test, DDC pump were able to achieve 700 plus liter per hour flow max rate after running CPU for 100% for 50 minutes. And we were able to achieve 82 degrees Celsius max CPU temperature. Now let's compare the results. We can see the idle temperature were identical for both D5 and DDC pump with different water flow rate. So pump water flow rate has no effect on the idle temperatures. But things got a little interesting and better for D5 under stress test. When CPU running 100% for over 30 minutes, where D5 was able to manage a two degrees Celsius lead over DDC pump temperatures. Even the water flow rate difference was more than 200 liter per hour with both running at same 22 degrees Celsius room temperature. 
Let's do the final summary. Both D5 and DDC pumps are amazing pumps, and there are many variations of these pumps in the market. In my opinion, both pumps are quiet, but DDC pumps are a little quieter compared to D5 pumps. But both are pretty quiet and you can hardly hear them. When comparing the prices, D5 is almost 3 times more expensive than a DDC pump with 300ml reservoir combo. With Thermaltake D5 costs around $200 and freeze mode pump combo only costs $50 from AliExpress shipped. Now looking at the results, the freeze mode DDC pump reservoir combo is a killer deal. The high flow rate does not affect the difference to justify the 3 times the price. And even looking at the flow rate and head pressure, the price difference, again, does not justify in my opinion. I hope this comparison between D5 and DDC pump helped. And we covered enough here to answer the long debate between D5 and DDC pump. Again, these results might change with different CP water block where water flow rate might affect the cooling results. Let us know your thought in the comments below. If you like this video, please sub and hit the like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.